In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. On a day like today, we may want to skip the prayer of confession because today is a day for joy. Why should we pause to think and talk about the ways we as humans mess things up? I get that argument. However, I also believe that the joy of this day is even more joyful when we are honest about who we are. We humans tend to be messy, scattered, and full of doubt at times. Knowing that Jesus was born in a manger for us and that Jesus loves and forgives us is even better news. So let us confess together to God, knowing that the honest truth of our lives only makes this good news better. Let us pray. Holy God, too often we feel as if change is hopeless. The problems of this world feel too big. The path forward is unclear and we are not confident that we can truly make a difference. We give up hope. Together we pray, forgive us for extinguishing hope. Holy God, too often we believe that peace is a thing of fairy tales. Our spirits are anxious, our bodies are weary, our world is fractured. Instead of praying for peace, both in ourselves and in our society, we assume that peace is no longer on the table. We give it up. Together we pray, forgive us for extinguishing peace. Holy God, too often we paint joy as naive, a luxury reserved for children and pets. We forget that you ate with friends, that you went to weddings, that you laughed and rested and hiked mountains. We forget that you knew joy and that you want joy for us in this fractured world. Forgive us for turning away from your light. Together we pray, forgive us for extinguishing joy. Holy God, too often we treat love like a vending machine. We put some coins in and assume that we'll get something back. However, in our wiser moments, we know that love is not meant for keeping score. Love is meant to overflow, to spill out to our neighbors, to transform our world. Forgive us for holding love so tightly. Together we pray, forgive us for extinguishing love. Family of faith, sin separates us from things like hope, peace, and joy. Sin wiggles its way between us and love, both love of neighbor and love of self. Fortunately for us, God had something else in mind. God sent God's only son to this world so that we could see another way. So friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. No matter how many times we turn our back on hope, or extinguish peace, or snuff out joy, no matter how many times we let love burn out, God continues to light our way. We are forgiven. We are seen. We are loved. The good news of this day, the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love of this day exists for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. God of manger straw and swaddle cloth, God of silent nights and joyfully chaotic mornings, we long to know you. The hustle and bustle of this time of year can be more than distracting. So for a moment we pray, still our busy hearts. 
quiet our minds. Help us to sink deeply into this day. Help us to pause here, to linger here, as we hear your good news spoken over us. God, we long to know you, so speak to us now. With grateful hearts, we pray. With grateful hearts, we listen. Amen. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by a son, whom God appointed heir of all things, and through whom God also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. There is this very human quality to the nativity stories in Matthew and Luke. So much rides on people's decisions. There's Mary and the whole question of what to do about the visit she receives from the angel Gabriel. Will she say yes to the baby Jesus or not? There's Joseph and the challenges he faces. What will he do about Mary's pregnancy? The wise men learn in a dream that Herod is not perhaps so very well-intentioned after all. How will they escape him? What will be the other road they take back home to their country of origin? There is this very human quality to these nativity stories. Everywhere we turn in Matthew and Luke, there's a baby lying in a manger, shepherds toiling away in the cold and dark, a city racked by fear due to the news that a new king has been born, and people on the move, either because a census is in the works or a strange star has appeared on the horizon. It is people, people, people in these gospels accounts of Jesus' birth plus a few angels. And herein lies a great deal of these stories' charm. In Matthew and Luke, we see lifted up into the light of day the importance of ordinary people's decisions, strength, courage, and shrewdness. History is being made here, a history that we are still living, and we humans are very much in the mix. Thanks be to God, for the inspiration of the nativity stories in these two gospels. And yet here's the thing, this emphasis on the human isn't the only way the early church told the story of Jesus's origin. There was also this other voice in play, this voice that insisted before ever Jesus was born or laid in a manger or secreted off to Egypt, that Jesus existed as a creative force in the universe. Listen to these words from John's gospel. All things were created through him, a.k.a. Jesus, and without him, not one thing came into being. Hear what the writer of Colossians has to say. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created. And finally, from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, the Lord has spoken to us by a son, whom the Lord appointed heir of all things, and through whom the Lord also created the worlds. Now, why did the early church make this amazing claim about Jesus's having had a hand in the creation of the world? Well, I think there are times in life when we need to feel and be in the moment with our choices and decisions. When we need to realize that we too, and not just the important people of the world, we can stand at a crossroads where it will matter with a capital M what we do next. God has called us and our automatic pilot will not do. Will we do our part to bring something new into this world or not? There are times in life when our next move counts. And I think the nativity stories in Matthew and Luke prepare us for these moments when the dream comes to us.
and the angel descends. But I think there are other times in life when we need to feel something quite different, when we need to feel as if this world doesn't hang on a balance so very precipitously, that there is instead in it a deep order, a logic, a purpose, an overarching meaning, a sun through whom all things in heaven and on earth were created. And John, Colossians, and Hebrews speak to these times. Now, I don't know if you've heard, but it's been quite a week at the church. With our church administrator out sick, it's been a welter of to-do lists and ad hoc meetings, and if you can cover this, I can handle that. After all, we were staring down a weekend with four services on Sunday, plus a blessing of the animals in 20-degree weather. We didn't know how we were going to serve communion and have the bells ring at the 11 o'clock p.m. service. Where were we going to put all the tables? I was so frazzled, I got home from staff meeting Wednesday and almost burst into tears at the sight of all the dead leaves that had found their way back onto the sidewalk leading to our front door. I had just swept them up. It was as if the primordial chaos of Genesis chapter 1 was rearing its ugly head both at the church and in my front lawn. I'm telling you, sometimes life just gets to be too much. Too much to do, too much to care about, too many bad news stories on the radio on the drive home from the grocery store. And at these moments, if someone were to say to us, here's something else for you to attend to, we would collapse. We can't always be about the work of partnering with God. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, we need to know that something bigger, someone bigger, is at work in the world. And that the someone, the son, the savior, has it covered. To him, belongs the bear, to him belongs the bearing and the carrying and the sustaining of all things. Because he was the one who created them. And he is the one sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high. To him belongs the bearing and the carrying, not to us. Indeed, here's what I wish for us this Christmas and into the new year. I wish for us a balanced faith. Let's be ready when God calls us to take the risks God would have us take as individuals and as a church. I know God has plans for us that will involve our energy and enthusiasm. But let's also remember to rest, as the old hymn says, in God's everlasting arms. For the Son of God is not just a baby in need of our protection and love. He is our savior and his word is powerful. In him, all things in heaven and on earth were created. Amen. Please join me in affirming our Christmas faith. Like Mary, we believe in cherishing good news. Like the angels, we believe in singing God's praise. Like the shepherds, we believe that God's presence in our life is something worth talking about. Like generations before, we believe that God is with us. Like the generations to come, we believe that God is with us. God is here. God is love. We believe, thanks be to God. In prayer, we break our words to God, sometimes silently, sometimes spoken out loud. No matter how they come into being, God hears our words and holds them close. Trusting that, let us turn to God in prayer. Today we pray for your church, that our messenger feet would take us to places other people flee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for the nations, that they would be good stewards and know their authority is limited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for our community, that we would notice the least as the gift of Christ's presence. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Today we pray for those who are alone during this holy season, that they would know the embrace of Christ through the arms of Christians. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray that your glory would shine so fully in everything we do that all our actions might be seen as the answering of prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God of candlelight and open doors, of tables and feasts, of holly and of ivy, we give you our prayers of gratitude, our prayers of fear, our prayers of grief. Collect them all and hold us close on this Christmas morning. For today, especially today, we long to feel you are near. With grateful and joyful hearts, we pray. Amen. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth, saying, go be the person you are called to be. Love wildly, do justice, and come back soon. May it be so. Amen.